special dialogue on the India-US defense partnership and how crucial it is to actually establish a secure future. Let me start uh, with you, Mr. Blair. You just heard Mr. Kumar speak, make the point that India is open to doing uh, business with uh, US defense companies. And I think what's been really crucial, which we've seen in the last years, is how the top leadership of both countries, now this is at the level of Prime Minister Modi, President Biden, the defense minister making his uh, first visit as a new cabinet minister to the US, and key agreements being signed, the reference to uh, the SOSA agreement. What do you think, as we see this relationship really accelerate and go into top gear, what are the top three things you'd like to see happen, and how would you respond to Mr. Kumar's invitation? Well, I, you know, I'd like to first start and, you know, recognize the tremendous progress with these foundational agreements. We could not collaborate in terms of bringing our best technologies and, and the collaboration transfer of technology, co-production, co-development uh, in India without the accomplishments over the last uh, eight years. Um, I, I think you have to start with what's, what's the foundation we have. Um, I was with Vivek Lal here in, in uh, 2006 when the first defense offset policy uh, was being implemented. And, and we as U.S. companies had to find a way to uh, position for major procurements, a fighter competition at the time. And at Lockheed Martin, we established a joint venture with Tata, too, actually. Uh, the first uh, was Lockheed Martin. Uh, making in India, making for the world, producing C-130J empennages as the sole source, and now we've delivered over 225. That was a catalyst for the private sector defense ecosystem. Sikorsky did as well on uh, S-92 helicopter cabins. And, uh, you know, we, we did that uh, out of opportunity, not offset obligation, as everyone thinks. It was out of opportunity. So I have to take us back to you know, an earlier foundation that was set that allowed us to sit here today and, and look at the vast increase in, uh, in production in India, for India and for the world. Mm -hmm. And now to, to where we're, I think in India, the 50% of our defense exports are going to the US. And that's so that's allowed us now to be in a position. So to answer your question, what do we do, need to do going forward? We need to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. We have to take it up to the platform level and when we look at a platform, it's we bring the platform and our tier one partners, mm -hmm. and, and that brings a level of transfer technology like the GE engine, which is foundational and transformational. Uh, and, and we see that opportunity, whether it's fighter aircraft, transport aircraft, or helicopters, building on the foundation of subsystems and taking it to a, a full delivered platform for India, for the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Lal, I'd like to bring you in here because you actually seen that journey, I mean, of course, uh, based in the US, and we've gone really 360 degrees. It's amazing to see how far we've come from a time when there was, uh, you know, technology sanctions and blocks, and to the kind of accelerated cooperation. And the building blocks of the whole India-US uh, defense relationship have actually been completely reshaped. Now, we've had that major drone deal, which was uh, cleared at the time Prime Minister Modi was in the US. It's now through Congress. How much do you think deals like this and this uh, mega deal really, you got Sea Guardian drones, Sky Guardian drones, what's the next frontier and how transformational is this going to be for the relationship? Thank you, Sonia. Yes, indeed. I mean, as I've observed the journey over the last 20 years uh, and from where we started to where we've come, and as, as Bill rightly said, I mean, we, we've gone through various stages in this relationship. But certainly a lot of the building blocks in terms of the foundational agreements and, you know, India being part of MTCR and so forth, that has really catapulted to, to that relationship to being at such a stage that we are really poised at an inflection point for the future. I think the kind of collaborations is not simply built to print that's being envisaged, but actual entire platforms that can be designed, developed, and manufactured in India for the global export market. Um, and so that's, that's I think, where uh, the trajectory is going. Also, I think the trajectory includes uh, relationships with startup companies, and, mm -hmm. and John uh, has, has, has mentioned that quite passionately in his, in his remarks um, in multiple occasions, and, and we in the defense industry see that happening. Um, the, the startup ecosystem in India is very robust. I think some of the players are doing uh, 
you know, world-class uh, projects where we are partnering, for example, in, with an artificial intelligence company mm -hmm. and a semiconductor company. And these are young companies with a lot of ambition, tapping into the global talent pool. And uh, if I were to point to one segment of the Indian industry, which I see the most potential, I would certainly say it's a startup, startup ecosystem because they bring a lot of innovation. And, and it's a two-way street. It's not only about technology coming into India, but some of the technology is going back to the US. And mm -hmm. you'll see some of these startups with uh, contracts with Space Force and other entities in the US. So um, it's very hard thing to see. And I think innovation is at the, at the root of everything we all want to be doing here um, collectively. And I think the future is very bright. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shockey, if you could come in at uh, this point. Well, we saw, of course, uh, the Quad Summit meet also in the United States. And the Prime Minister talked of the Quad as a force for global good. But of course, the reality remains that we live in extremely turbulent geopolitical times. And at a time like this, especially for defense companies, for defense cooperation, security, collaboration, and uh, ideas exchange, how crucial do you think this US-India partnership is? First of all, thank you for the question. And Mr. Secretary, thank you for your opening remarks for somebody who's only been on the job for a month and a half, it feels like you already have a firm <laughs> grip of your portfolio. So well done. Uh, Sonia, to your point, as you um, talk about whether it's ISET or security of uh, the supply agreement or major defense partnerships, as the governments come closer, what you really see is uh, US industry and India industry coming closer and closer together. We as a company at RTX and our three businesses, Collins Aerospace, Pratt & Whitney, and Raytheon, we've been operating in India for about 70 years, so we have a long relationship. We've been manufacturing here for about 25 years. In fact, when I was here with this group uh, last year, I think our employee count was 6,000 people. Just in the one year since then, we've already grown by 1,000 here. We've got plans to continue growing. If I look at our Pratt & Whitney business, three years ago, we had 30 engineers here. Today we have 700. In 2025, we're gonna have 1,400 engineers. So we become closer and closer as the governments become closer. And I think it's an enduring relationship, irrespective of administrations. Uh, you see uh, the United States and India you know, continue to have mutual interests, uh, partnerships around the world, uh, mutual security interests and the ability to project um, peace and stability around the world, again, partnered with the industry as, as one of the leading forces. So. Mm -hmm. I think th uh, that's interesting. Well, Mr. Gupte, uh, great to have you on as well. And just that point really about uh, the ecosystem of uh, the US and India, the defense ecosystem, and how it joins in as a partner really in a much deeper much more abiding and really a relationship which is now based on growing trust between the United States and India. How do you see the defense ecosystem playing a role here? Look, I think as it relates to the e building the ecosystem, we have to be bold. Um, the days of having a light, an asset light approach in the ecosystem for India-US collaboration, uh, that's 10 years ago, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna have a hotel suite office somewhere, parachute people in, and out and expect to succeed in this market and expect the US-India ecosystem to succeed, right? You have to be fully invested, fully invested, not just in some of the things that Dr. Lal was talking about, the ability to co-develop and design platforms here, but also fully invested in the long-term operational readiness of these assets, the sustainment. So we're talking about having the ability to train here in India. We're talking about having the ability to sustain and to maintain for MRO here in India. We're talking about the ability to develop an ecosystem of suppliers that support not only the Indian defense industrial base, but also the US defense industrial base. And when we talk about the suppliers, we have to be bold there as well. Look, both us, Lockheed, we have joint ventures with Tata, large companies like Tata, large relationships with Mahindra, with Godrej, with Wipro, with L&T, and on and on. 
But that next tier of Indian industry, the MSMEs, mm -hmm. are also going to drive that ecosystem's growth over the long term. So we have to be bold and we have to make those investments to develop many of those. That might mean pulling them from other industries. That might mean going and working with an auto supplier and working closely with them over the course of five years to make them certified to come into aerospace. Right? These are all investments of time, of treasure, and of experience. Uh, but I think if we can do that, it's going to play long pay long-term dividends. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Kumar, we've heard all these different perspectives. But I think that, that important point on building up the trust ecosystem as well and the belief that uh, US defense industry is here to be true partners, that there's going to be a sharing of technology, training. What is India looking at when we are talking about building this as a deeper partnership, about creating a new ecosystem? Well, thank you very much, Sonia, for asking this question. In fact, it's, it's always better to understand each other very well. So, uh, US India understand well. Uh, the requirement of India is understood by US and their industry joins. Uh, our requirement uh, has been uh, very categorically uh, phrased by Honorable Prime Minister that we want to become Atmanirbhar, that is self-reliant. When we say we want to become Atmanirbhar, self-reliant, that means not only we should be uh, amongst the nation which, which are able to safeguard our strategic interest and our territorial boundary, but we should continue to do in all situations. So we should be able to design, manufacture, develop, sustain our armed forces. And that's why the, the reliance on Atman Rivarta is there. Apart from the, the other goals of creating the ecosystem of industries, of cutting is level technology, which not only help defense industry, but also rob positively on the civil industry side, and uh, creating the job opportunity in this country. So our uh, Objective is clear. We understand the US, US understand us, and over the last uh, many years, as, as has been uh, shared by my, from my fellow panelists, that there is a clear understanding of each other's point of view and desire to work towards th achieving those goals. And what we provide, as Mr. Gupte was saying, that we have a big industry house, we also have very uh, resilient MSMEs, startup companies, uh, the the uh, organizations, individuals, uh, research institute who can who can do a lot in the cutting edge technologies of AI, machine learning, and also in the space technologies. And we also have market, and we provide opportunity to create alternate, reliable, sustainable supply chain for the U.S. industries for their supply to the rest of the world, including U.S. itself. So obviously, we believe that a win-win partnership is possible, apart from our uh, goals as two big democracies, uh, the reliable democracies of the world, our other interest also allows to create win-win partnership, and our industries are also capable to create win-win partnership to the US industries. Uh, I hope things are aligned. Now the thing, uh, requirement is to continue this process and take relevant decision at the relevant time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blair, if you could come in on that. Uh, we, you mentioned earlier about the importance of the foundational agreements. How crucial do you think the security of supplies agreement actually is when we talk about building this partnership? And also, of course, given the fact that for India, the Indo-Pacific remains an area of uh, security concern, what do you think that this actually, you, you, the Prime Minister said this about Quad, that we're not a force against anybody. This is a coming together for a global good. How do you actually see that play out in the current security environment and the need for building the U.S.-India partnership in that context? No, it's a great question. You know, from a security of supply agreement, uh, it, it's going to, as I said earlier, build on a foundation to take us to the next level in terms of two-way collaboration. And I think at some of the earlier panels, uh, there are startups today that are contributing into the uh, the, the U.S. DOD and, and Space Force. Uh, and that's a great exchange as well as uh, uh, the investments that are being made here in India. But one of the things I'd like to address to the Secretary's comment is we talk about critical and emerging technologies. I think we need to talk about a critical need. And, and, and we think about resilient supply chains. We have a critical need for uh, aerospace and, and defense materials, 
Uh, we heard on an earlier panel about rare earth metals, and, and there is capability today in India that I think through the foundational agreements as well as the security of supply agreement, and I would suggest maybe through a public-private partnership, including universities, we need to take it to the next level because with what's happening geopolitically, we don't have the same access to titanium, high-strength aluminum, rare earth metals in some of our neighboring countries that are, are not, in, in not supplying. And, and that becomes, uh, uh, I'll say, a strategic need, uh, a critical need, uh, whether it's aircraft engine technology and producing here in India, and we want to meet, ultimately, the goal of 50% indigenous content. That's a high bar. Mm -hmm. If you look at the light combat aircraft, when that went into service, it was not 50% indigenous content. It had to stepwise get to that level. So I, I think we need to collaborate and, and look at how's the, how the policy adapts mm -hmm. and, and the government investment with industry can take us to the level of what we aspire to. Uh, I mentioned at the platform level, but really at, at all the systems level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna take uh, all of us working together. Yeah. That, that's an ambitious target, I said. I, no better place to state it than on this panel. But uh, Dr. Lal, you've been talking, of course, and you mentioned to me that you actually began at NASA as an engineer, and we're seeing what all the new breakthroughs are every day. We saw that, well, that parallel parking yesterday happening on SpaceX. But space and AI, which the Defense uh, Secretary also mentioned in his uh, speech, as the, really the frontiers of the future. Do you think that's somewhere the US-India partnership can really get the early starter advantage? I think so. I think um, there is great potential in space. Uh, I think you, you've seen greater interest in the United States, but also in India, and there, there are a lot of overlap that has been talked about earlier today as well. Um, I do feel, uh, just to foot stomp something, so Salil and, and Bill said, from an indigenization perspective, MRO is, uh, is going to be critical for a mm -hmm. lot of the platforms. Uh, and the indigenization, as you develop the MRO, will be a catalyst to getting a whole supply chain um, put into place, as, as the Honorable Secretary has, has mentioned in his remarks, which is, which is a requirement. And I think the same thing will go as, as, as we look at opportunities in space. And I know space is, is also going through its own policy changes to allow private sector to get involved more so in India. And I, um, I therefore believe there will be greater partnerships. And there, again, going back to my comment on startup companies, there are several startups in space uh, in India that, that, are, that are now launching rockets of their own. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I, I see that as a growing sector. Uh, I do see space defense as another frontier that will come up. Uh, I think um, communications uh, in space is going to be another area of potential jo joint collaboration, other than the manned uh, space missions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, on artificial intelligence, I do feel that um, you know it's like electricity. Artificial intelligence was around 40 years ago as well, but now you're, you're getting the backbone infrastructure in place to be able to leverage it for something useful. And, and, and it will change the way we do business in almost all the sectors. Mm -hmm. But um, I think relative to what we're seeing some of the startup companies doing, and we are, for example, producing a joint product with one of the artificial intelligence companies for data dissemination and data um, management, which I think is going to be very important, especially as you know, we talk about deterrence of war and deterrence of uh, um, that situation in the geopolitics. I think mm -hmm. one of the key parts of that is going to be how much information one knows and intelligent information one knows, and that's through persistent surveillance. Mm -hmm. And I think AI has a big role to play in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shockey, if I could uh, really bring you in on uh, this, uh, India's focus on really making India, Atman Nirbhar, and indigenization. How does that really uh, play out with, say, what U.S. defense companies and what they're looking at as well? Uh, Mr. Blair mentioned the high bound for us in India is fantastic to see the jobs, the local supply chains, the technology coming in. How does it play out from a U.S. perspective? Well, I think as we all struggle to recover from COVID and the fragile supply chains, I think as demand for our systems increases, we can't meet that demand in our U.S. facilities. So 
it's not like we're taking jobs from one area and moving them over here. It's we're trying to meet worldwide demand, mm -hmm. set up a resilient ecosystem so we have redundancy, so we have that security of supply chain, and I think it's a win-win. And I think both governments view it that way, and I know policymakers in the United States see it that way too, because we, along with a number of my colleagues, we continue to be asked to produce faster, to make more of them, and right now our factories can't support that and our supply chain can't support that. So it's incumbent upon all of us to work together to meet that demand, meet that security need that we have around the world. So mm -hmm. I think it's a win-win and I think both sides recognize it. Now it's on us to capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Gupte, if, uh, I could just bring you in another aspect. I mean, we all live in a multipolar world now and uh, really, it's a time when India especially is, as a, our foreign minister would say, it's really the India way. We're looking at uh, global partnerships. We've seen many companies vying for getting a slice of the pie, as it were, in India. How do you think what's different about the India-US relationship? Uh, we've talked about the shared democratic values. How much of an abiding a partnership do you think? How strong does that make the partnership? And what's special about this? Well, I think, look, um, as, as an Indian American, you know, I, I grew up um, at a time when perhaps politically speaking, India and the US were in a bit of a different place. But interestingly enough, culturally speaking, the people to people ties were always incredibly strong. And what you've seen now over the last 25 years is the evolution such that you have strength across the board. And you have that trust that the SECDP was talking about earlier that has really developed and strengthened. And as you have that, I think it, it creates a tremendous number of opportunities. Um, I think you've seen changes in policy, right? You've seen those foundational agreements and things like that the bill was talking about. But I think you also see, um, uh, you, you see comfort around things like intellectual property. Um, you know, there are places in the world where the US and US companies have had nervousness about that. That is not as much the case in our business in India. Uh, you see this incredible um, step up in quality of manufacturing. So tomorrow, uh, the Indian Foundation for Quality Management is having its symposium here in Delhi. Uh, this is an organization that wouldn't have existed 15 years ago. But quality in Indian manufacturing is recognized by US companies. Let me just give you an example. The global aerospace supply chain, as uh, Mr. Shaki just noted, is struggling, right? Uh, especially also in the US. It's probably delivering somewhere between 60 to 80%, somewhere in there on average, uh, on-time delivery. For most of the, I would say pretty much all of these companies that are sitting on the dais who have supply chains in India, I am almost certain that number is in the high 90s for all of us. It is breathtaking performance. And that builds trust, right? It is just comes down to performing, and Indian companies have done that, and so, you know, that, that, that trust deserves to grow over time. Mr. Kumar, I know you've just come in and take it just about a month and a half, but do you see this as this partnership as really the one which has the potential to scale up or touch new frontiers. Do you see that we've had a very exciting last three years and suddenly a flurry of agreements in the last six months as well? What do you see as the big targets uh, or your ambitions for this in the years to come? It's difficult to quantify for me to uh, quantify these targets, big mission. But uh, as I see, it's the, the trust between two uh, industrial uh, uh, cultures the back in USA. The Mr. Gupta is saying that now US company are understanding that, are recognizing that the quality of output given by Indian companies. Our need for technology is very clear and our desire to, to develop those technologies with the leaders in, in that technology in USA is also very clear. Our capability, uh, we have demonstrated earlier, we would continue to demonstrate. So the way I see is that the relation is, ship is going to be strong and strong in coming years, not between, not only between government to government, but also industry to industry. And we are deepening that relationship by taking this relationship between startup and startups, MSMEs and MSMEs. 
uh, I think that we have all the ingredients to to manufacture in India, to develop in India, to carry out the research activities, not immediately, but down the line to develop the product, which can be uh, uh, manufactured and supplied to the rest of the world. Uh, we have all the talent here. Uh, I hope in coming decade, we will, we will see very, very strong relationship uh, between U.S. industries and Indian U industries, not only in defense sector, but also in other sectors. Mr. Kumar and everyone in the panel, uh, Salil, Bill, uh, Jeff, and Vivek, thank you all for being here. It's an absolutely fantastic, uh, and I think very uh, energizing and uh, interesting discussion. Thank you, and thank you for being such a great audience. Thank you. Thank you.